Welcome back to another episode of The Shack Show. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about where I fish in the spring. Uh, I decided to do a little mini series about where I fish during different times of the year. And the reason I wanted to do that is if you're a beginner surf caster or somebody that just wants to uh, learn a little bit more about where to fish during different times of the year, uh, this is kind of gonna be a very cool series for you because it will give you the best understanding of where somebody like me, who is a surf fishing guide on Cape Ann, where I bring my clients throughout the year, um, because we have a very versatile uh, structure based on Cape Ann, I can really take them all over the place and fish in so many different areas throughout the year. I'm super fortunate to be able to do that, uh, that where I fish dramatically changes throughout the entire season because of the water temperature, the bait, uh, you know, and there's a lot of other factors as well, like the weather, for example. So I just kind of wanted to go through a little bit about where I fish and why in the spring. Uh, during the spring uh, for Cape Ann, our season starts around the last week of April to the first few weeks of May. Uh, that's kind of the general time when we start catching fish. Every once in a while, you'll see fish a little earlier, a little later. Uh, it all depends on the weather and how warm or wet spring is. Uh, for us. And uh, that's pretty late for a lot of places, uh, unless you're north of, well, unless you're in like Maine, that's pretty late for a lot of areas. Um, and so we have uh, a lot of our season, or a lot of our early season is actually pretty much until early summer. And that's what I would kind of qualify as our spring season. So what I mean by that is uh, we're going to be fishing from second week of, or second last week of April um, to probably the first week of June in one area on Cape Ann and or I guess two areas on Cape Ann and then uh, we tend to spread out from there to fish all sorts of different structure and all over the place but we're going to focus uh, more specifically on spring in this episode uh, and then I'll do another one for summer and another one for fall and tell you where I focus most of my time during that time of year okay so to start us off, early, early in the spring, I find myself fishing mostly in the estuaries and rivers. And the reason for that is uh, during the spring, you're trying to find the warmest water you can because that tends to be the first place that those bass on their migration will take a little pit stop off and warm up. There's tons of life and bait in estuaries, so it's an easy place for them to get a meal uh, and stay warm in the cool spring. Uh, the one you know rule of thumb about that is when uh, you're fishing in an estuary, the warmest water is gonna be during an outgoing tide instead of an incoming tide in the spring. And the reason for that is during the whole incoming tide, you have these, or well, I guess the outgoing tide, you have these mud flats that will warm up throughout the entire outcoming and throughout the entire incoming. Again, they'll still be warming up throughout the day and until the, it's high tide. And then on the outgoing, all that warm water is going to start flooding out and there'll be no cold water coming in from the ocean, the open ocean. So that's why the estuaries tend to be the warmest places uh, on Cape Ann in the spring. Uh, and that goes for all over the place, Cape Cod, New York, the whole up and down the Atlantic coast is, you know, you'll have estuaries and those will be the warmer water areas. Uh, the bass really love this in the spring and you can even get some pretty serious sized fish a little bit later in the year that will come into these estuaries for the warmth and the bait that's in there. Um, so I spend most of my time in the estuaries in the spring. Uh, I, I focus a lot on the outgoing tides. Um, I find that, you know, that's when the water's the warmest, that's when those bass are the most aggressive. Uh, another time that I really like, or another, I guess, part of the tide that I really like to fish is the last few hours of the outgoing. The lower the tide is in the estuaries, I've always found is the easiest time to find the bass because they're the most consolidated. Uh, a lot of these estuaries and rivers will really drain out a lot and you'll be able to fish the last little bit of the outgoing and uh, you'll be able to find those schoolies that are just more condensed in smaller pockets of deeper water than in super, uh, I guess, filled up estuaries that are really flowing. I guess they can be really flowing at low tide too. Anyway, um, but when these estuaries are super filled up, uh, it's a lot harder to present uh, little paddle tails, spooks, and other plugs to these uh, fish when there could be, you know, 15 feet of depth between you and where those fish are hanging out. Uh, sometimes it can be hard to get these little soft, soft plastics down to them, 
and that's why I like fishing a lower tide. Mid to low uh, tide is mid, and then too low tide is tends to be my favorite time to fish these estuaries and rivers. Um, another thing I really look for in the estuaries and the rivers are choke points. So if you have this big estuary, if there's a small little place where all these fish are going to be funneled through before it opens up, that tends to be a very productive spot because obviously all those fish have to move through that area, whether that be the bait fish and whether that be the bass, it's all going to get consolidated. And the bass know that the bait fish will be consolidated there and therefore those bass will also be consolidated at those choke points. Uh, a perfect storm is going to be if you can find that. Uh, as well as some varying bottom structure. So like uh, if you have gravelly or uh, if you have a sandy estuary or a muddy estuary, if it changes from sandy or muddy to gravelly, which is kind of best case scenario in my opinion, or if it changes from sand to mud or mud to sand, uh, or if you have like a muscle bed, something like that where it changes a little bit, uh, you can really find a lot of life as well as a lot of bigger bass will find themselves in those choke points, especially if you can find a little bit of change in bottom structure, like some rocky, rockier areas. That tends to be kind of the, the money zone for fishing estuaries. The other thing that I always look for is deep, slower moving water. And what I mean by that is schoolies all the way up to, you know, 40, 50 pound cow size trophy striped bass, um, don't really like to fight a lot of really fast current uh, as much as people actually would think. And that's why a lot of these estuaries don't fish very well during the moons. Uh, that's why we'll get to that in a second, because uh, this is kind of something that completely broke the rules for me. Something that I you know, was talking to old, older guys, older guides on Cape Ann about, and uh, I was able to figure this out myself, and it really was a game changer for, for me, uh, was finding uh, some slower, deeper moving water and uh, finding those choke points is just super, super important. Uh, the slow, deeper moving water tends to hold and trap bait fish between two tides. That's why like, you'll find a lot of those really big fish right at between the two low tides. Um, and that's when you'll have your best bet at catching a really big bass is at that slack tide or between those two tides in a deeper, slower moving estuary. That's when there's gonna be a lot of really big fish. Uh, and that's where I fish most of the spring, but then this also spills out onto the, the beaches. So uh, I also spend a lot of my spring fishing off the beaches. Um, the water tends to be pretty warm on the beaches as well, depending on the wind direction and the tides. Uh, if you can learn your tides and learn the water temps of these beaches, and when you know you can step in the water and you'll be like, wow, the water's pretty warm here. Or when you step in the water and you're like, wow, it's really cold in the spring. Uh, sometimes you'll be on the same beach, two different tides, and you'll step in the water at one tide and it'll be really warm. And you'll step in the water on the other side of the tide and it'll be freezing cold. And the bass will probably be there when the water's at its warmest. That's why I've always found um, in the spring, you can have amazing fishing, uh, especially if you have sand eels. Uh, we have a lot of sand eel runs in the early spring and uh, we tend to find even blitzing bass early in the spring. I remember specifically, uh, it was early June, there was a sand eel blitz during the day. I was crushing schoolies all the way up to probably 33, 34 inch bass all day long. Then as soon as it got dark out, there was some tremendously big fish in there. I ended up catching a 40 pound bass that night on an eel, which is just amazing. Uh, and that's super early for us, it's kind of still in the spring time frame. So uh, I kind of qualify that as kind of a spring, a very large spring bass. Uh, so you can get pretty lucky during the spring and you can fish these, uh, these places where you find warmer water and you can find uh, bait as well. And uh, finding that warmer water, like the estuaries, uh, tends to be very productive. A lot of our, be in fact, I would say pretty much all of our bigger beaches on Cape Ann have, uh, have estuaries that dump out Onto, onto the beaches, most of our bigger ones do at least. And uh, that also makes for a lot warmer water kind of dumping out of those uh, estuaries onto the beach that hold a lot of really nice, not nice fish, but just a ton of fish in general. Um, and in the early spring, a lot of those bass will stage up in that warmer water. So that's where I fish a lot of my spring. Um, a few different lures that I use and I really love for those places are spooks and little paddle tails. Specifically, I fish a ton of rebel jumping minnows. I fish a ton of uh, algag whippet fish. Um, those are kind of my two main go-tos during the day. At night, I'll fish uh, needlefish. I will fish um, darters, potentially, depending on what if there's adult bunker around or herring. Um, 
I'll also fish glide baits. Um, and I guess there's a lot of other ones. A black sluggo, especially a black rig sluggo, can be really deadly both on beaches and in the estuaries. And these go for both the beaches and the estuaries, the stuff that I fish during the day. Um, I guess every once in a while I'll be pulling out a little bit bigger spooks um, and I'll also be pulling out just like smaller pencils as well. But ten, in the spring, the bass tend to be a little bit more finicky, not saying they won't hit pencils. But uh, a lot of the time, uh, you're probably better off throwing a spook. You'll probably still catch those same fish unless they're way out at the end of your cast. For the most part, I'm going to be using uh, spooks instead of pencils during this time of year as well. Um, and then for a rod setup, <clears throat> for a rod setup, what I like to use is a nine foot uh, light carbon surf or a nine medium carbon surf. And these are both the nine foot rods. Those are kind of my go-tos in the spring. Early spring, I might even be using uh, the uh, Lamb Glass uh, Inshore Black series rod. Um, the lightest one they, the lightest model they have, I forget the exact, I think it's like uh, three fourths to one fourth of an ounce. I'm not entirely sure, don't quote me on that. Um, it's something like that. I see it right over here. I might just grab it to, to read it off for you guys. But um, this is kind of my really early spring setup, which is the nine foot, or actually, sorry, seven foot two uh, rod, and it is rated from one fourth to three fourths. Uh, and that is kind of my go-to. I have a very small Daiwa reel on here. Um, and for the most part, I'll be fishing this really early in the spring. Uh, and then during the uh, mid part of the summer, I'll be, or during the mid part of the spring, I'll be fishing the uh, nine light carbon surf. I'll be using that during the day mostly. The nine medium I'll be using more at night. Um, and then if I'm eeling, I use the, the, uh, the, the nine foot um, GSB Skinner or the, the 10 foot 101 M, uh, the 101 MLS rod, which is the uh, 10 foot GSB uh, that is from one to three ounces. And that's an awesome rod for eeling. Uh, I guess a little bit better casting distance and that does fantastic on the beaches and in those estuaries where you kind of want a little bit longer casting distance to like hit either a rip or something that's further out. Uh, there's many places where you need that little extra distance to get into the zone, I found. So bringing a 10 foot rod into the estuaries sometimes is kind of the way to go. But um, for a lot of the places, a nine foot rod is just totally uh, all I need. And I fish nine foot rods all season long, but uh, for the most part, um, you know, I'll be fishing nine foot rods and sometimes I'll be fishing a uh, 10 foot if I really need it. Um, so those are kind of the rods that I use and I use the Vansall VSX 150 during that whole time for my bigger reel. That's kind of the, my go-to. Um, and I'll put that on all three of those, all four of those rods for that matter, literally. I'll put it on the nine light, the, the nine medium, and then the 101 MLS uh, rod, both the nine foot and the uh, 10 foot rod is uh, an awesome, awesome setup for eeling as well. And I'll put use the, the VSX on that, the 150. So there you go. Uh, that's kind of my, um, where I fish in the spring, kind of what I use. Uh, and that was a very light overview of what I use in the spring. Uh, I left out a lot of plugs that I use in the spring. Kind of went to my go-tos, kind of every day in the bag type plugs. But I, I have many other plugs that I do during the spring. I might even do a whole video on my plug bag that I use in the spring. Uh, and look forward to more of like where I fish uh, videos during different times of year. Uh, I have a whole lot of more videos coming. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.